and been an, always an interest of mine. But first, I'd love to get your take on the decision by DOJ to appeal this case. Yeah, totally interesting here because as on the merits of the case, this is a Hail Mary pass. I mean, the odds of them actually winning on appeal are very remote. That's partly because, one, the appeals court has to take the factual record developed in the court. And this, if you read that opinion, it's fact, 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 fact. There are like no court citations in there. So it's going to be very challenging for an appeals court to overturn this unless they just want to like throw out decades of antitrust jurisprudence, I think is unlikely. So why would they be doing it? Number one, they seem to just want to harass AT&T and Time Warner. Number two, they want to send a message to the other potential merger partners that we're going to challenge you. And the, you know, the head of the antitrust division was very explicit. He said, even though we lost big time on this one, if you try to do another vertical merger in media, we're going to sue you, and we're going to sue you in somewhere like you know California or a different jurisdiction and try to get uh, a different ruling. And, and their long strategy here may be the Supreme Court. So they lose now in the D.C. Circuit. They bring another case, which they hope they'll win someday somewhere else. They get an appeals of affirmation of that. Then they have the conflict in the circuits, which would mean the Supreme Court would take this. The Supreme Court is not going to take this on its own. That's the long game. That could be a very long game, in my view. But I agree with Stevenson. This is going to have no immediate impact on them. But I do think other merger people are going to have to be prepared to go through the nine, 18 months, whatever it is. But Jim, uh, Jim, 